I want to hear what you have to say about RZA, and we're gonna get to this list. Everybody, thumbs up in the uh, in the chat so we can get hella people in here. We got two hundred and forty five people in here. Let's get like three hundred people in here. That's Sorry. great. Yes, yeah, subscribe to the page. Hit the like button. Kick yeah, the that algorithm. too. That too. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. All that. <clears throat> Here's my first notes. Because I based this, uh, the homie Paul that wrote the uh, Wu-Tang Forever article, man, he got me amped up. He was in my head some as a writer. Mm -hmm. and it made me listen to Wu-Tang Forever today. Okay. And then I realized something. Wu-Tang Forever made my top 100 list. I have it at 100. And I'm going to tell you why. It's Riz's fault. This album is supposed to be much better. Hmm. And it's his fault. And I'm going to break down exactly how it's happening and how we weren't paying attention and why. First of all, on the first song, Reunited, do you remember how the song ends? Mm -hmm. With Takitha saying, it's Wu-Tang mm -hmm. and RZA. And mm -hmm. RZA. I what never really thought this? about that. That was some real right. David. That was some David Let's Ruffin pause for shit. For a second, it's Wu Tang and Riz. It's like, what the fuck is this? David Ruffin and the Temptations, <laughs> nigga. What are you doing? I never really thought about that. Well, we need to start thinking tech. about it because I started thinking about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Well, let me get to the super He's... chat. Hold your thought because that's some good stuff. Vincent <clears throat> Hughes says, uh, "Sunshine popped up the other day on my playlist. It's Did not it so bad." Off? He said, it's not so bad in hindsight. The video is terrible, though. And uh, that really killed the perception. He said half Philippine thing, let's call her Suki. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> okay, so... I take offense. My Fifi is like... Let's go ahead. Wu-Tang and RZA at the end of Reunited. Go from there. Yeah. Do you remember the intro to this, too? Mm-hmm. You remember how arrogant he sounds? I told Shorty she don't even need to go to summer school. All she needs to do is buy the Wu-Tang CD. Mm -hmm. He's super arrogant on here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hold on. Listen to my third comment. Mike D says, this is arguably the most lyrically dense record ever. I've said that. Hold on. Well, if that's the case, why is not talked about as one of the all-time greatest albums of all time? You want to know why? Because the beats don't match up to that lyrical output. Now, does it? Who's the executive producer of Wu-Tang Forever? Mike, what you said might be the most lyrically dense album of all time. Rizzo. Okay. Honestly, some of my favorite songs on there, because, you know, my top two on there is Heaters oh, and Scary it. Hours. He didn't do that. We're getting to that. Yeah. <clears throat> now, mm. they're 10 months removed from Iron Man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what we've spent so much time talking about how maybe the problem with Wu-Tang Forever is that well Method Man is too big of a star Raekwon is too big of a star Ghostface is too big of a star Jizz is bubbled over to the uh, bubbled up from the underground for the first time no the problem is the producer thinks he's the star and his output's not the same that's the problem with Wu-Tang Forever. Because actually, when you look at it, the top performers on Wu-Tang Forever are the top MCs. Inspector Deck, Ghostface Killer, Raekwon, Method Man, and briefly, when you see the Jizza. Yeah. They actually well, yeah, oh, did their job. Oh, oh, oh. No, to no, no. to Rizzo's credit, you don't think it. that he, he brought it on the mic on this album? That's what I mean. He's more concerned with being a star... And we're about to get the Bobby Digital in a minute because now I can see what he was really doing on Wu-Tang Forever. He was creating his persona because he knew he was about to release his project sometime in the near future. So he's more concerned with people getting concerned with him as the MC and the production suffers. You're too busy trying to be a star. You're the sixth or seventh best MC on in this group on your best day and you're too more worried about your verses. His verses are better than his beats. Let's go to some of the beats on here. Cash still rules, fourth disciple, older gods, fourth disciple, mm. better tomorrow, fourth disciple, impossible, fourth disciple, MGM, true master, heaters, true master. That's six of the best 10 beats on the album. This is true. You didn't produce six of the best 10 beats on the album. Here are his beats. For heaven's sake, reunited, triumph, bells of war, black shampoo, it's yours. Now... 
Go look at Capadonna's album in March of 98. It's almost handled strictly like he literally jumped in and did, I believe, three tracks, Run, Blood on Blood War, and MCF. Mm -hmm. True Master, Fourth Disciple, and Mathematics pretty much put the pillage together. I just realized the mm -hmm. pillage suffered because, well, Riz is not executive producing it. You want to know why? Because he's too busy making Bobby Digital that's getting released November the same year. Mm. LP with right. the Super Chat says, Rolling Stone got, got Get Your Freak On as the number eight best song ever. Uh, LP true. also says, Riz's production kills Woo's momentum. Uh, cool. Now let's go to some of the beats on Bobby Digital, like NYC Everything with every with Method Man. You mm -hmm. remember that beat? I remember that. That's better than almost all the beats he did on Wu Tang Forever. Holocaust. Mmm. Huh. I got all kind of stories about that song in itself. Mantis. That song remember has Mantis? a hand in, you know, according to hip hop, being created. Yeah, Mantis. Yeah, I love Mantis. That beat was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, aren't yeah. these better than, than than some of the severe punishment? Isn't this better than severe punishment? Imagine if those beats were on Wu Tang Forever. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Somebody, somebody became more concerned with being a star, and we've always thought it was the MCs. No, it was the producer, mm. and the producer failed us on Wu Tang Forever. And if you actually look at it, his beat making has never been the same since, and that's why we have to audit this situation. Because when I looked at his I'm just going to call it what it is. Wu Tang Forever is great lyrically. It's not executive produced in a great manner. That falls on him. His beats on here are his worst set of beats that he's put out on any Wu Tang project up to this point. To that without, point. without, without, like a cream, a bring the pain, a glaciers of ice, a ice cream, a shadow boxing to say that there's no beat like that on here. What's the best beat on here that he did? Because I think it's probably um, <clears throat> Bells of War or For Heaven's Sake. Yeah, because I don't think Triumph's that incredible of a beat. I think it's the performance of everybody else. It's the MCs. Um, yeah. Black Shampoo, it's yours. I like Reunited. this yours a lot. And Reunited, okay. was, Reunited was the first one that popped in my head. I mean, part of why Reunited is great is because they have the violinist on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, well, he didn't play that. <laughs> <laughs> Clark says, uh, Mike and Coop, thanks for your show. You're right in the wrongs of Rolling Stone. Oh, yeah, we're about to go in. We haven't even yeah, yeah. started. We're, about to do we're just oh, warming up. I literally, put the, I literally put this in my notes. I said he pawned Cappadonna off so he can make a solo project and didn't take care of deck. You pawned off Kappa. You didn't take a, take care of deck. You're too busy talking shit on Wu-Tang forever. You're too busy. You, you get what I'm saying? This is why Wu-Tang forever didn't cut off because here's the thing. He was the one that kept everything concise and kept it tight. You're like Iron Man came out what August the year before. Mm -hmm. It's it's June. Yep. Like you didn't had ten months. And this is what I was about to say. <clears throat> how all time great can we call him, and how high should we have him? Because I just went <clears throat> down the list and counted how many tracks he produced before Wu Tang Forever. I mean, this is the thing, man. And we've had this discussion before, and I produced think we any did. tracks. I think we had this discussion before a few months back. RZA made some of the, my favorite, my personal favorite beats in hip hop history. Yep. But I think I said this too. When it came time for the Grave Diggers to do that album, Prince Paul was the producer. Yep. And now that you bring up these things on uh, Wu Tang Forever, it got I'm lost sorry. Over. I mean, if you're all time great, top five, top three, whatever. You can't get outproduced by two other guys on the out. You know what I mean? Like, it's a tough sell. Well, not even that. Well, here was all, what I was about to submit two to you. Two other guys who aren't top ten. Let's just be real. No, no, right. Well, well, here's what I would submit to you is that he produced 12 tracks on Into the Wu-Tang, mm -hmm. 13 tracks on Takao, 12 tracks on Return to the 36 Chambers. His crown jewel, he did 15 tracks on the Purple Tape, which mm -hmm. is his best beat output ever. 12 tracks on Liquid Swords, 16 tracks on Iron Man. That's, That's 80 lot. beats. Hold on, no, no, no. That's 80 beats. Wow. After those 80 beats, though, Mike. Yeah. Because in those 80 beats are probably about 20 of the best beats we've ever heard. Right. But no, no. In those 80 beats right there are 20 of the best beats we've ever heard. Straight up. But what I was about to tell you is how many beats has Dr. Dre produced, Mike? 
How many beats? Oh man, DJ? is that yeah. a trick question? Yeah, no. Look at what I'm saying. Because what do we do when I talk about people going to work? What's the thing where it's like his best work? His best work in terms of volume, like the beats are there, but is the work there? Because after Iron Man, the work's not great. He's not an all-time great producer after Iron Man. Wu Tang Forever is the proof. LP with super chat says, uh, "Facts, Coop." RZA said, "I can uh, can't cut your way out of a wet paper bag." Shaking my head. All the rappers got better, and the beats got worse. The W mm-hmm. and Bobby Digital were trash. Now, mm-hmm. the W, beat, I feel on, like he took on a lot on more w on the W, w right? Keep. I like the W. Outside what? Hollow Bones and Careful mm. Click Click are probably the only beats on there I would keep. LP says... Did he even uh, do Hollow Bones? I don't even know if he did that. Beat. I don't that know if he did that master. either. I don't know if he did that either. LP right. says Supreme Clientele saved Wu, and RZA only did three songs. And he didn't do the best beats on there. He did Nutmeg, The Grain, and what else? Um, Mighty Healthy? Did he? No, no, no. He didn't do Mighty Healthy. Who did Mighty Healthy? That was... Uh, um, um, Carlos Brody. No, I think that was Mathematics. Carlos Brody did uh, We Made It. Either way, that's the best beat on there. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, did he do Wu Bang? Who did Wu Banger 101? I think Rizzo might have done Wu Banger 101. I'll I should know Wu-Banger this stuff 101. like the back of my hand. That's my album. Uh, Tom Annette with the Super Chat says, I'm going to um, get flamed for this, but Iron Flag is, has dope production. Love that. No, it album. doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Man, no, with the Super Chat get says, right now. No, it doesn't. America's most in death certificate, what the album, Muddy Waters, Doggy Style, The Chronic, Illmatic, Ready to Die, The Infamous, Into the 36 Chambers, and Wu are among the best. Yes. Oh, we got Leroy Green in here. Did you miss all the uh, the blueprint action we had going on? I feel like I missed the super chat. Uh, nah, I don't think I did. So, okay. Is that is that what you wanted to say about RZA? Because you know what? I don't want to sit here and big no, on no. Kanye again, but no, no, no. we can he, say he, a lot he, about he, Kanye West as an artist and as a producer. I think he's one of the more selfless that, that so we've what, ever seen. I mean, so what, he gives some great production to other people because he knows that he doesn't fit on it. Mm-hmm. So he, the RZA produced the W2, so we're going to give him careful click, click, hollow bones. Um... I thought the Let My Niggas Live with Nas was pretty dope. I Can't Go to Sleep with Ghost was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. those songs more over time than I did when it came out. Now, no, Hollow Bones, I, I like that Careful the moment click, I heard click it. Hollow Bones? No, no, no. I love those. No, Hollow Bones out. is crazy. I'm talking about uh, crazy. Can't Sleep. Uh, and Let My Niggas Live, I thought was underwhelming. At the time, I was expecting a crazy joint from Wu Tang and Nas together. I just was. Okay. Maybe right. my expectations were too high. They were verbal intercourse high, probably. But yeah. I'm about to say, I think that's that verbal intercourse thing because yeah. it's like when I hear Ray Nas and Deck on there, it's like, I was like, nobody raps like this anymore, like at all, yeah. except for like, you know, Ray Nas and Deck when you hear them now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chris right. Hogan says, uh, the blueprint can't be top five. It has four week songs. Listen, man. I agree. I, I agree. I just think that the blueprint oh, was a great songs? moment. Hold on. I, 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 first of all, I will tell you this. I I'm don't think they're down- quote unquote weak. Hola Ho Vito is not a weak song. It just doesn't fit on uh, That's exactly what I was about to say. I don't consider Hola Ho Vito to be a weak song. I think it stands out because it's not. You know what? You know what happened is, is that what kind of happened to him on the volume one kind of happened on the blueprint too. I don't love the singles and the singles attempts, but he's a more well-rounded author. Uh, um, he's a more well-rounded writer and author of songs. And so he's better to like navigate those waters better. Cause I don't love it. the records on the blueprint are the records that are the singles that I don't love is, Oh, I like girls, girls, girls. I don't care what anybody says. So if, you can, if, you're, if you can commit slick Rick Bismarcky, God bless and, and Dougie, I mean, I mean, I mean, and Q-Tip to like sing the backup, like like to a song, to your second single, like you're pretty big, and I like the verses, and I like the extra version, but the jigga jigga that nigga jigga, the whole I whole veto the Izzo thing, it's like you could have kept it. Yeah, man, gnarly I dude. To I you, H Bob to the Marley, Izzo, dude. That's one of Kanye's worst beats. It's like, oh great, you took a Jackson's, you took a Jackson Five loop. How original. <laughs> <laughs> Gnarly yeah. dude, I puff by Marley dude. 
Like Rastafari's do. Okay. You ready to get into this list? We can. I just, because here's what I mean about like, well, well, Rizzo already fucked them over business wise. It's like, you know what I mean? Oh my God. No, I mean it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not high on him. You think I don't like Talib? It's like, I don't like Rizzo at all when he talks. Like every time he talks, I'm like, I'm like, just play shadow boxing and shut up, nigga. I'm like, oh, stop ruining man. my, stop ruining my formative years by opening your mouth. <laughs> Rizzo. Is one of my personal favorite producers, but yeah, it's a. Uh... Oh no, he's probably my personal favorite producer because of those projects before Wu Tang Forever. But I mean, it's like when I look at the work that Pete Rock has done. Yeah, you know, Cream. And that, that's what I was saying when we were talking about this a couple of months ago. No, Pete Rock you were made. Right. Uh, you know, he he made a, a you know what song I'm talking about, the West Side Record. Come what? on. Huh? West Side, Benny, and uh, Conway. Oh, Brutus. Brutus. Oh, yeah, yeah, Brutus, yeah. I mean, you know, the last thing I could point to the Rizzo made that I, I was excited about and I kind of knew it was going to be something was uh, Dark Fantasy, the intro to My Twisted Dark Fantasy. Now, I love that record. It ain't Brutus, though. Here's, and here's what I think we need to do. It's like, he might, I mean, I think the best way, hmm, I don't I don't even, was he the best producer in hip hop from 1993 to 1996? Is that fair? I think so. I think that's fair. Okay, so how do we contextualize that? Because that makes him the best producer in like arguably like either the first or the second best era. Yeah. So that's pretty very high, strong right? era. Yes. Right. Right. He, he, he's the strongest producer and arguably the strongest era for the MCs. He's doing the beats that the MCs want to rhyme over the most. Your best MCs want to rhyme over his beats the most, probably. Him and but Green. I always thought that the greatest conversation was more of a marathon than a sprint, no matter how tough that sprint was, you know? And I, and, and, and I can... How about this? Here's how I feel about it. Well, you have to run enough of the marathon to be in the conversation. So I remember Barry Sanders only played 10 years, but when he walked away... He had 15,000, over 15,000 yards and was on the verge of breaking Walter Payton's rushing record the next year. He would have broke Walter Payton's rushing record in his 11th year in the league. Yeah. That always stayed with me. And so I felt like he ran just enough of the race, like got to 100 touchdowns, got to 15,000 yards. And as far as like the eye test, like as far as the eye test for people I've seen, there's not even anybody close to him on the eye test. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he got, and, and he, you know, he like played. you said with Rizzo, the ear test is there, man. Like those no, beats. And so, if and I so, pull and out so, twenty Rizzo beats, it's tough for anybody to compete with that. No, it's tough. But what I'm saying is that Barry Sanders played ten years, though. Yeah, Mike One Hundred with the super like, chat says, "In '01, Jay was the MVP, but lost the finals to Stillmatic." That is a great way to put it. That is brilliant. Yeah, that is brilliant. Because it also, because it also kind of like, because you know, the blueprint is the fall, and like, like, Stillmatic was the end of the year in December. Mm-hmm. 